Hey, man, did you see that catch by Michael Conforto last night in it's right funny, field for the, for the Metropolitan? First of all, I, I like the way you pronounce his name, Michael Con Con Conforto. Con nice Conforto. Job. And Thank the you. answer is yes, because I was flipping back and forth, obviously hoping that that ball that Conforto made a nice can, catch. Uh, can I, nice can I cut you off for a second? Would, it would have been a three-run base-clearing double. Go ahead. I'm sorry. It, well, this, this is where you point out that you, you, you spend as much time trying to make sure you're watching the Mets lose as right. you are watching the Yankees win, which I don't buy. I don't That's buy. I, I think what it is is the Yankees have been losing a lot more than the Mets lately. And in fact, you're, you know, you, you want to get a taste of a winning franchise, but that's, <laughs> You know, look, tonight's the – but you know what? Let's not talk about baseball. Hold on because You can't no, 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 do that. No, you NFL can't just football move starts – No, I did. I just did it. I just did it. NFL football okay. starts tonight. It does. Um, Chiefs, Chiefs, by the way, were given 10 and a half. That line has come in over right. the Texans, who we all remember were beating the Chiefs 24 zilch in yes. the playoffs um, before Mahomes uh, went into one of the most extraordinary performances. Beast in, mode. In, just, I mean, incredible. So, so, um, but I got to tell you, it's a lot of points. Um, and I think people are overthinking this one. One of the other dynamics is at work with this, this line is people are saying when Andy Reid has enough time to prepare for an opponent, he, he, you know, he, he, he's aces, yeah. uh, obviously plenty of time here, but you know what? I, I, I kind of, I kind of like Deshaun. I kind of like, I want to take those those nine and a half points, and I'm going to take the under 55. Look at you. Texans in the under. I say take the Texans on the money line because I think they're wow. going to win the game outright, and I said wow. it on TV. So yeah, I, because I love Andy Reid, but, you know, you got the Super Bowl hangover. The Texans are coming in pissed off. Yes, I yeah. said pissed off. And quickly, the Met announcers, who are oh, would fantastic. You please? Come when Conforto I mean, made that catch, it's like Willie Mays, you know, in, you know what? in the, you in know the what? World Series making a bat. It's, come on. It was you know Michael what? Conforto in a meaningless September game for a Met team that despite having won I'm gonna, last I'm night, gonna still say four something. Games I'm going to say something that's, that's indisputable. Um, the, the Mets booth um, has been the number one in baseball for the last 30 years, and you can't yeah. deny it. So if you want to come at it, at Mex, Ronnie Darling, and, and Gary Cohn, you know, that's fine, except for those are the three best announcers in the game, and you wish you had those guys calling your game. So let's talk about sports betting. Because yeah, here you well, are hold on. Yes, uh, I want to talk about sports betting. I'd rather have a winning product on the Stop. field than the best booth behind the glass. Look, that's me. you know maybe what? I'm, listen, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe okay, that's well, important. I don't you know. Wanna, I mean, the, look, a, if you want to belabor this point, um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a baseball fan. I'm, uh -huh. I'm loyal. I don't need to win every year. And I like guys like my announcers that are also fans of the team, but are also very insightful. And they make – baseball is culture, bro. I sit back and I listen. We all hang out at night. That's what I do with those three guys. Uh, you need so, to win every second of the day. I and want, I would take a look inside yourself just I to make sure that – I want the folks at home – I want the folks at home to understand something. When Tim bros you, which he just – he hardcore bro'd bro me. You got bro'd with a you finger. You're agitated. You're, you're agitated. Not, you know what? If I'm not sport, agitated. If you sport bro'd me or pal sported me, then if I know. If I buddy paled you, if I buddy paled you, it would have meant I was kind of pissed. But instead, I just want to get onto the fact that that DraftKings was up five percent today. Penn Gaming was up at least that much. And, and yeah. there's a real argument that there's a handful of winners that are going to be carved out maybe now in what's uh, you know, formerly the turf of the casinos and sports betting. And, and uh, so I, my view on this, um, despite the fact that I typically am a value investor, um, I, I, you know, they're not going to – DraftKings isn't going to make money for two years if you're lucky. Um, but that addressable market, which you can make an argument, Jeffries uh, has uh, a call saying it's a $20 billion market by 2025 and that uh, in-game – could make it a much, much bigger market. So I'm, I'm a buyer. A hundred, a hundred percent. And, you know, DraftKings yeah. traded up today, I think the 44 handle closed at 42, only probably because of the broader market sold off. And we can talk about that tomorrow. But I think in terms of DraftKings, I think it's going to blow through this all-time high of 45 bucks. The Michael Jordan news is interesting, but not that huge of a driver, although obviously the stock got a pop on the back of that a week or so ago. But they're so far ahead of the curve. Professional sports could stop tomorrow in all four major games, and I still say you buy these stocks when, because that's where the world is headed, without uh, exception. So interactive gaming 
interactive sports viewing, uh, in-game betting, um, betting online. There's no question that the revenue holes in budgets around the country uh, are counting on cannabis and betting. Um, so sin stuff, sin stocks uh, to plug some of these holes. I, I, I just, you know, and I'm, I'm pretty fired up on, on gaming in general as an investment. And I've, you know, I've gone to see, you know, some of these League of Legends and these sold out, you know, Barclays and Gardens uh, to watch, you know, all that's going on in the space. This is obviously a different part of the space. But when you think about how media companies, some of the biggest, and you made this point tonight on Fast Money, how, how it, they probably won't do it, but Disney uh, should be in this space. I, I would just make the argument that media companies, but also uh, how about the sports leagues themselves? And, and if you think about the, the contracts and the value of their contracts, they're either going to need to be cut in on some of this. They're essentially creating that environment or they're going to say, you know what, we want to do this ourselves. And they may feel the need to actually uh, control it for compliance reasons. So it, it's a fascinating space. Um, and, I, and I think it's something that investors, if you haven't paid attention to it, you should. Yeah. Adam Silver, the NBA is light years ahead of every other major sport. The NFL is light years behind. And then you have hockey and, 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 and uh, hockey and what's my right? Baseball somewhere and, stuck in the middle, but quickly think yeah. about this, you know, let's say Tim and I want to watch the Met game and I'm being serious for a second. We want to watch the game together. Tim's watching it, his house. I'm watching it in my house. You can, I can foresee a scenario where I could bet Tim, you know, Right, a dollar that the next that pitch Michael that Max is going to throw is an Uncle that Charlie. And he's like, no, it's not. We'll go yard. That could be all game long, and DraftKings could be the back end of that and multiply that out by a couple million people. And you see what we're talking about here because the engagement with professional sports when people have money on the line is tenfold. So, so I, I, I think that's great, and I love the fact that we're going to be palling around watching Met games, and it's nice of you to even oh, contemplate. That was a hypothetical. And, and, it was yeah, a but, hypothetical. But, but, but here's the other side of this. I, I mentioned the casino companies, and I think this is, is uh, a, a real pivot point for them or a potential disaster. Um, I think of a guy like you, and maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but a guy like you uh, with his boys heads out to Vegas, uh, rolls into Emeralds uh, you know, to, to watch – uh, you know, football games all afternoon, just chowing on wings and, and beers. And, and that ultimately, this is a major reason why a lot of people went to Vegas is the sports yeah. book. Um, and, and, you know, while it, it's great that uh, that environment for you and your boys growing up was obviously where you went. Um, and, and did you get into fights in those places too, by the way? Because sports bring out animosity in people. I can you, see okay. a younger you, guy, Adami, are you mixing done? it up. Are, are you <laughs> done now? So I have gotten into fights in bars, number one. And number two, I don't think I've ever bet on a professional sports game because it's not my thing. Like, I don't wow. get any juice out of it. And I don't go parading into the sports book with my boys, quote, unquote. <laughs> I mean, that's just not the way I roll. But I, I will say this. Um, Last night we took a poll, who would be a social and who would be a greaser, and yep. you got all sort of hot and bothered. I went through the Twitter feed, and almost to a person, they said Tim Seymour would have 100% been a social. So there you go. I was right about that. And, and, and what this means, folks, as we head uh, to commercial break at commercial break, is, is that guy is essentially knifing me by that fountain and leaving me just to die. It's awful. <laughs> it's awful. Good night, It's not guy. true. See you Good later. <laughs> 